Toastmasters, honored guests, have you ever had a moment when you set a goal, and it's an important goal in your life, and then you find yourself, as you're trying to execute that goal, running into obstacle, roadblock, and then finally coming to what seems like a dead end. Today I'm going to talk about my tortured path to writing a best-selling series of science fiction books on Amazon.com. Now this story does not begin in a pretty way. My, I, it was the late 1990s, and I was working as a project manager at Lockheed Martin Space Operations. And so I didn't have a lot of free time, but I decided that I'm going to go for it. I, I wanted to write a fantasy novel, one of those big, thick ones, because I liked reading fantasy, I liked reading science fiction. And I thought, you know I, know, I know the structure of these stories. I can tell a story, and I just have to have a plan. My plan was nights and weekends, I can spend a little bit of time, and I can write one segment, then I can write the next segment, then I can write the next segment, and eventually the book will get done. So I, so I did that. I, I started out writing the book, and I came in and I said, OK, I'm writing the first segment. And then when I came back to write the second segment, things went awry. I made a huge mistake. I read what I had just written. It was not pretty. And so I couldn't stand it. I said, well, I'm going to just tinker with this a little bit. I'm going to just fix it up a little, and then I'll write my next little section. So I'm doing exactly what Michael said not to do. But I messed with it, and I got in this habit where I was editing as I was writing. And this ground me to a complete and total stop. I was at a stop sign. And then one day my wife walked up to me, and Carol said, Rick, what the heck are you doing? Finish the damn book. You can edit it after it's done. And it was to me, it was like, whoosh. Who knew? A <laughs> first draft is not, does not have to be perfect. You can come back and you can edit it. So that was the best advice I ever got in writing. And I did finish that book. It took me a long time, uh, part time. But I finished that book. I did not publish that book. So in 2004, after that success of at least finishing the book, I set a new goal. I wanted to write a best-selling science fiction series, <laughs> which was quite a leap in goals. So I started again. I wrote the first book in that series, which is not the one you've got before you but it was called The Second Ship. And the first book in that series I finished by 2006. So plan is on track. But now I hit big time obstacle. I don't know how to get the book published. I read several books on the subject, and they all agreed on one thing. First step is get yourself an agent. Because these big publishing houses, they're just throwing these manuscripts in the round file as they're coming in, unless an agency with a, with a relationship with that company brings that book in the door. So I thought, okay, that sounds like an excellent idea. So I researched how to do that. I submitted my manuscript, and I just sent it out. Literary agency, literary agency, all the, all the way across New York City. Anyone have an idea of how many responses I got back? Anyone want to take a guess? Give me a hand. Zero. <laughs> so plan one was failing miserably. I decided, OK, those books are just wrong. I'm going to try submitting them just directly to the publishing houses. So I did that again. Boom, 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 boom. No response. And I waited around. Nothing. So now I'm in trouble. My only, only prospect is to pay to have some publisher self-publish my books and guess what? They wanted me to buy, ahead of time, 2,000 copies so it was worth their while publishing. <laughs> so I, I, did, I ponied up the money, and they actually produced lovely books. And I had this beautiful looking set of books, 2,000 of them, sitting in my garage collecting dust because I couldn't sell them. I'd go to talk to Barnes & Noble. No, 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 no. We only deal with major publishers. I could get a few of them into places like Changing Hands, little mom and pop stores. But I was shocked to learn that 
they didn't put my book right up there with J.K. Rowling in the front window. <laughs> so, so I'm back in some little cubby hole with just the spine showing on one copy of my book, and I can't sell any. So now I feel like I'm, <clears throat> I'm at a dead end, and I didn't like being at the dead end. But then I found out there was this new thing called the Kindle. And Amazon had put out this thing that's up in the cloud, and you can upload your book for free. They'll publish it for free. You just have to format it. They'll give you 70% royalties on it. You can set your own pricing. And it actually shows up someplace where somebody might see it up on Amazon.com. So I did that. And I, I started getting these monthly electronic sales reports. And they started coming in, you know, friends and family, mom and dad. I was selling a handful of books, a few dozen. But over a year and a half, it gradually got to be where I was selling more than 100 copies of my book a month. But a funny thing happened in September of 2010. I had just published the second book in the series. And the sales, for the first time, topped 1,000 copies in a month. And I thought, man, I hope that is not a glitch. And <laughs> the next month, it was triple that. And then in November of 2010, I sold 12,000 books that month. In December, I sold 18,000, and man, we were having a happy Christmas. It was a great Christmas. And then in January of 2011, I topped 26,000 in monthly sales. I had the number one and number two best selling science fiction books on all of Amazon. And I was like, yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> done it. I got over the insurmountable obstacles. Well, the. I took a screen capture of my number one and two ranking, and I sent it to an agency in New York that I had already resubmitted to. And boom, I had an agent like that. No manuscript, nothing like that. So, so he, the agent went out, and he negotiated a great publishing deal with my current publisher. Since then, I've published 12 novels, and I've sold more than a million books on Amazon.com. The point of all of that, though, brings me to the main point of this talk is, if I can stumble my way into all these roadblocks and dead ends and somehow find my way out of it, spending god-awful amounts of money on something that doesn't work, you know, there are people out there in this room that could do a better job and have more opportunity without making some of those mistakes. So I have three little bits of advice for those of you that are thinking about it. First and foremost, you can't have a bestseller if you don't finish the book. <laughs> the second thing is, don't spend a penny publishing that book. Go to createspace.com, which is an Amazon company. They've, they've got great tools for you to publish it, and they'll, they'll put it up online. And finally, pay for an editor, a good editor. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, if you follow these steps, you might just have a bestseller in YouTube.